Welcome to episode two, part three of Too Many Plugins. And today we are discussing the Viking VK1 synthesizer from Blamsoft. It is available as a pay what you want VST. So, um, recommended price $59.99. Uh, so go check it out. Uh, there'll be a link in the description. All right. Uh, let's, we've talked about how to make a drum kit, a simple drum kit. We've talked about how to make a chord with a monophonic instrument. Now let's just go over these other knobs because there's a bunch of knobs. There's a bunch of stuff. Okay, here we go. Uh, and there's a bunch. I'm going to try to go fast. All right. So number one, we have talked about envelopes, volume, attack, decay, sustain, release. I hope you know what all those mean. If you don't, you're going to have to watch another video because that's not going to be in this video where we discuss it. And then filter, attack, decay, sustain, release, amount, and along with the filter, cut off spacing, resonance, keyboard amount. So the only one of these that I was like, what is this, is spacing. And that affects panning. So I was like, okay, that's cool. Um, mode, high pass, low pass or dual low pass filter. So high pass, low pass, dual low pass. So to taste, you know, you'll, you'll figure that one out. Let's talk about the oscillators. So you have three oscillators and they are cleverly labeled one, two, and three. I know who to thunk it. So one, two, three, let's turn them all on. So we got a little unison going on. And here's your volume knobs, simple enough. Down here, um, oscillator two, frequency mode, normal. Semitones, fine. So that's something to be aware of. Normal semitones, fine. And that's if, so if I'm in normal mode and I'm adjusting this, you can see it's doing semitones and a decimal point. Then if I do fine, that's for my very fine adjustments when I want to create a chorus effect or what have you. And then semitones is when, now I'm going to make a chord and it's doing semitones directly. So I kind of did it the hard way in the last tutorial, but you know, it still worked. So that's what these two little switches do. So let's leave it on fine and we're going to create a lovely chorus effect and there we go. So there's your three oscillators, volume, uh, there's your frequency mode, um, release, just turns off, or you have a release. Simple enough. Let's get into the oscillator section here. Uh, this one's pretty straightforward. Octave per oscillator. Your number of feet. And then frequency, fre frequency we just touched on. Wave, um, so this is the shape of your wave. You know what, just for fun, let's, uh, let's look at the wave. So there you go, triangle wave. Now let's move it a little more this way. You can see it move the, moving those harmonics around and changing your wave. That's a little more obvious. So there you go. That's, that's what's going on as you're playing with this wave. Now let's uh, turn these back on and it's going to go crazy. There we go. Sync. You can hear it. It's synced. They're synced together. Now they're not. Now, FM, frequency modulation. Let's turn it on and see what happens. This is oscillator three modulating oscillator one.
And this is where your modes here might have a little more dramatic effect. So that's, you want to create some beautiful noise. Play with that FM on off combined with, uh, let's turn the sync off. So there we go. Keyboard control. And that is just oscillator three keyboard control. So if, um, there it is, just oscillator three turned on uh, with keyboard control off. Um, but there, I'm, I'm just running my fingers up and down the keyboard and it's same note over and over. So that's how you do that. Um, and then frequency range, oscillator three, low high. So that's fun. So it's like dropping the octave. It's like crazy octave drops. Bloop, 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 bloop. Now you can really see that square wave. Make out the wave because it's an LFO basically. So if you wanted to use oscillator three as an additional LFO, this is the way to do it. Use that little uh, frequency range. Um, which now let's get into the next portion here. Programming on and modulation. So your modulation buses. That's what we're talking about. Modulation buses. All right. So what's what? Um, this one MW mod wheel mod wheel. Um, the other one on is a it's a modulation bus that's just on i don't know what on stands for um oscillator noise on source yeah i don't know i don't know just it's just on it's just on you know don't ask questions um so oh, that's fun it bears mentioning that um these um these are still on even when the oscillators are not on. So it's oscillating the pitch right there. So they still work even um, whether or not your, your oscillator is actually on. You turn this on and you still get... See, I'm still getting my frequency modulation, but I have turned my oscillator off there. So that's what was going on just then. All right, so you've got these different sources. So let's say I want to use oscillator three like we were just talking about. I'm going to set it to low. And where is it going? So we want it, it's going to go to, so let's set it to a little square wave. And then we're gonna set it for a really slow speed, 32 feet, it'll be a slow speed. And that's gonna go to oscillator two, turn off oscillator one. And what is, we're gonna shape it by velocity from my keyboard. So how hard I hit the note. Now let's see what happens when I turn the amount up. All right, so it's affecting the pitch, obviously. Um, let's speed it up. So, okay, that's fine. Um, now let's change the destination. So let's do the filter. We'll turn the resonance up. We'll turn the cut off down a little. And I think you get the idea. And so each one of these, you know, pitch, I think that's obvious what it does. Uh, oscillator to an oscillator three, we know what it does. Uh, so this pitch just affects all the pitches uh, instead of just a single oscillator. And then um, wave. 
is affecting the actual wave itself. Um, and then the programmer, this thing down here at the bottom, that's, that's your programmer. So you can send this modulation bus down to here to affect the program. Um, and, and this is where you can get into the weeds. Um, and I could spend an hour just messing around with this and seeing what does what, but, um, we'll, we'll move forward because you got things to do and you know, you want to play with this thing. Um, modulation wheel. Um, I think, I think most people are familiar with what a modulation wheel does. Um, most easily illustrated by by the filter there. Um, so, and as I turn it up, you can see more effect. And I've got this uh, triangle wave here affecting my modulation wheel. Now I've got my programmer affecting my modulation wheel. And it's programmed for noise. So there you go. Um, that's how you can do that. So... Modulation buses. A uh, there's a quick and brief tutorial. Um, the and while we're on the subject of those, um, your LFO right here is directly related to these. So, and then you can change how is your LFO synced? Are is it synced with the keyboard or is it synced with? A, is it a gate? Is it just free? So, or is it synced with a time signature, which is going to be very useful for when you want to uh, create some some kind of uh, EDM type effects things. Sweep those filters. Let's see. Filter. You get the idea there. That's what your sync is good for. Uh, fine tune. That's fine tuning the whole thing. So just in case you need to repitch something, glide rate. Uh, also pretty straightforward. How long does it take to glide? From note to note. Let's see how long is long. So kind of long. Uh, I've actually heard longer. And then uh, I like it around here. So that's glow, glide, not glow rate, glide rate. All right, let's talk about your little programmer section here at the bottom. We've already discussed the, the little switches here. We know what those do. Um, global, here we go. What kind of noise do you want? Do you want white noise? Do you want pink noise? Or do you want classic? Which, um, I'm not, let's see. See, there's your pink, so it doesn't have all the same high frequencies. And then classic is, classic and pink are pretty close. Yeah, classic has even less of the high frequencies, it sounds like. Your gate, um, legato is, I mean, honestly, I, I just left it on legato for almost everything. Um, if you want to do drone music, turn it on. Now it's on, just forever. Just gonna keep going forever. So, gate, re-trigger. If you've got a filter effect and you want it to re-trigger with each note, then that's what re-trigger is for. Um, if you have it on legato, it won't re-trigger every note. It's going to slide around. Um, then, keyboard mode. Um, do you want it to slide from the last note you played, the lowest note, the highest note, or... If you do single, it won't let you slide around at all. I'm tapping. It should be should be should be sliding around there between two notes or multiple notes. It's not doing anything. So same thing. 
So that's that. Uh, filter. Number of low pass poles and high pass poles. And this is one you can you could just play with each of these and you just find the one you like. I like the drives in this though. There, there's some some mean sound and drives. You can get some nice distortions going. Um, so yeah, play with these and ooh, I like two. And this one, the HQ, that high quality one, yeah, that one thing is high quality. It takes up uh, a lot of processing power, I noticed. Um, yeah, let's save that base too. Um, so the on programmer, we touched on this. You got your sources. Um, so let's say the source is oscillator one. And then we want the programmer to go to let's say destination oscillator to amount um and then shaping we want to shape it by i don't know what we want to shape it by uh, lfo rate so this is one of those that you can just play with it for forever See, and now I'm, I'm, it's doubly shaping it here. Because I hit it hard. And you, versus hitting it soft. And it's affecting the pitch of, of what you're hearing. I mean, and this is, again, this is where you get into the weeds. Um, and then your mod wheel programmer, same idea. Um, you have all your different sources and they can all affect all manner of things. Um, so many choices. I'm not gonna go any further because at this point, um, Go back through that if 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 uh, if something didn't make sense, but it's gonna be a lot of noodling and knob twiddling because there's just uh, there's there's so many different choices. And then when you get into playing with your um, when you get into making chords with this uh, and all you know all of the cool stuff that can happen there, then that's where to me it gets pretty interesting. So, um, take a look, see, see what kind of noises you can make. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.